Hello everyone, can you believe that some people are still in denial about the fact that the Obama administration built the cages for their migrant children? They can get past the fact that they have been brainwashed by the lamestream media. And so when I mentioned it on my last episode, they were losing their minds blaming President Trump yet again. But don't take my word for it. Let's check out this report from the New York Post. This report is from September 2020, back when President Trump was still in office. And it goes like this. MSNBC host Rachel Madcow fiercely criticized President Trump for his immigration policies earlier this week. But as Fox News reported, the photos used on air of immigrant children were actually from the Obama era, dating back to 2014. They outfitted the kids with a little mylar blankets and a lump of padding that was supposed to qualify as a mattress. And they told them to sleep on the floor behind chain link fence alone in federal detention without their moms and dads. In 2018, the very same images went viral after an Obama speechwriter used them to accuse the Trump administration of similar actions. The mistake was eventually caught and the speechwriter's Twitter post was deleted, but not before Trump got the last word in about the error. And I quote, Democrats mistakenly tweet 2014 pictures from Obama's term showing children from the border in steel cages. They thought it was recent pictures in order to make us look bad, but backfires. Dems must agree to wall and new border protection for good of country. Bipartisan bill. End quote. Many viewers were furious at Matt Cow for sharing misleading information. This user said, Matt Cow is clawing for attention. Another one said, She's actively brainwashing. This other user said, Matt Cow, how can you use old pics from when Obama was president? Fake news at its best. So you Obama supporters, get your facts straight. And remember that senile Joe was the vice president of your sweetheart, Obama. Now, moving along, we have people throwing a tantrum due to Joe Biden's pro-human trafficking executive order, since they are limited to the amount of people that can come in on a daily basis. But actually, let me correct myself. Migrants activists and the mainstream media are not too happy about it they are the ones that are complaining to senile joe's pro human trafficking executive order don't forget their dream is open borders so that everybody can come in here free of charge and when it comes to the vetting process well forget about it that's not important and as everyone is whining and crying about this on the left, we have this happening. <laughs> Amazing. We are being surrounded as we speak and nobody is talking about it. And our government is letting it all happen. That being said, it's time to go over the updates. Let's get started. Well, that's right, guys. So we have more migrants complaining, especially after the new pro-human trafficking executive order. Check out this guy, for example. Hey, hermano, yo tengo 42 días viajando, pasando hambre, necesidad. Mis hijos están en Venezuela, pasando necesidad. Y me van a prohibir pasar, me tendrán que matar allá. So he says, hey, brother, I've been traveling for 42 days, going through hunger and struggling. My children in Venezuela are struggling right now. For what? So that they can prohibit my entry over there? And he points towards the border. 
and he says, they're going to have to kill me over there. Imagine, that's the energy and the attitude that he is coming with. Talk about another level of the entitlement mentality. Well, that was a short, but let's go to an actual report this time. So this migrant says, I'm going to stay here until I can cross over the border. The reporter says, that's the same feeling a lot of these migrants are sharing right now as they wait in Mexico for the right opportunity to cross over the border into the US. This other migrant says, well, since they are not letting me in, I'm going to find another way. The journalist continues, this is a new posture they are taking now after Joe Biden signed the executive order. This other migrant replies, we have many other possibilities. Then the journalist continues, with this new executive order, authorities will be able to deport those migrants that do not qualify under the new strict rules, which equivalent to reaching 2,500 detentions on a daily basis for a week. Then here we have Dr. Victor Trevenio, who is the mayor of Laredo, Texas. And he says, it's too late now. Biden broke it. Biden broke the immigration system, and he seems very upset about this. The journalist adds the following. On average, for the month of May, we reached over 3,000 people per day. And therefore, the new order will affect those that go over the limit. And this is creating fear and confusion among those asylum seekers. And this is per this political analyst. And that brings us to Ariel, the political analyst, who says, due to this executive order, you may have now caused an indirect change of those routes that the migrants will be using from now on. Additionally, he says that the longevity of this program remains to be seen and it will depend on the resources the government has to deport all of these people. He says, thus far, we haven't seen anything to increase the resources so that we can have more deportations. The journalist states the following. In contrast, some officials from those cities that surround the border believe that the new restrictions will help with the migrant influx. However, she says, for those individuals that have helped the migrants, aka NGOs, they believe that this new order is very concerning. And this is Sister Norma Pimentel from a Catholic church. And she says, let them come here and see what's happening. Don't make decisions without taking into account everything that is occurring here. Don't make this a political issue, but make it a humanitarian issue. The report ended right there. So you have Sister, what the hell is her name again? Sister Norma, my bad. So Sister Norma is out of touch with reality. She is under this belief that only good people are coming through the border. She seems to forget that the good people she is worried about are completely mixed with the bad people. We all know the vetting process is non-existent under this terrible administration. And so you do have violent criminals entering the country. In fact, we already know a lot of them are here already but they are continuing to come in the thousands on a weekly basis, if anything, on a daily basis. Why not? They can do it. Might as well just continue to come, right? But that's my opinion. She's completely out of touch, but let's go into the next report. Okay, on this other report, the journalist says, like a bucket of iced water on top of their heads, that's how these migrants feel right now 
after listening to the latest news on Joe Biden's executive order that is putting restrictions on those that will be crossing the border from now on. She says, take for example this migrant named Angel. He has been traveling for months and now with these new restrictions he is looking at other options. He's Ecuadorian and he says the following, well my idea is to form a large caravan and cross over a bridge and completely evade immigration. <laughs> How does that even make sense? Form a large caravan and go over a bridge? How does that... What is he talking about? Maybe he's referring to running over immigration officials. That's what I'm thinking, because evading them through a bridge when you have a large group of people, that doesn't make sense. Not too bright, Angel. Not too bright. So remember, all of these migrants that are being interviewed are on the Mexican side. The reporter says the fear and desperation is spreading quickly all over these cities where the migrants are waiting. This Honduran migrant says, well, I will try to go over the border, but if they denied me, then just send me back. If you're not going to let me in, send me back. Because there's nothing for me to do here. There is nothing good here if you won't let me in. And this pastor that is helping some of the migrants is saying that this new order will be catastrophic for the migrants and will actually make more of them come to sections of the border that are already going through a major migrant influx. He says the border will blow up, the bridges will blow up due to the desperation. He says people are very concerned. He doesn't want to see deaths or people being kidnapped anymore. What he wants is this process to continue where these families can proceed in entering America the right way. Which again, it doesn't make sense unless he believes that the right way is just crossing over the border and saying, I want asylum. But that's not the right way. We all know that you have to go through the proper port of entry and then you have to have a valid case. So I'm not sure if he means that or just as long as people continue to pass through his church, he believes that's the right way. I don't know. They didn't specify, but I'm just wondering. The reporter says on the Mexican side, there are thousands of families that are waiting to cross over the border. But now they don't know what will happen to them after the latest developments. This Venezuelan migrant is angry. He's saying we are bouncing around from one area to the next. What are they going to do with us? What is America going to do with us? He's asking. <laughs> oh, man. Here she ends the report and says a lot of people are concerned that more migrants will come here. And the activists believe this will make things worse, not better. And migrants will continue to risk their lives. And that's all the updates I got for you guys. What do you think about the last one? He was asking, what is America going to do with us? So Americans, what are you guys going to do with these migrants, especially with those that have the entitlement mentality, since it is now your responsibility to take care of them? I'm just the messenger, guys, okay? That's the new reality we have today. What a stupid question, by the way. What is America going to do with us? Stupid nonetheless. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Thank you to my amazing supporters. The shoutouts are in the description below. Don't forget to join my Discord and follow me everywhere. Smash the like button and subscribe. I will see you on the next one.